So royalty is not a tax, but it is already the share fixed by the MMDR. And since that is that, that is why that context as, as a sort of a paraphrase, it was said that royalty in that sense is akin to a tax on mineral rights. And then it became the, the catchphrase became royalty is a tax. So my Lord, the Chief Justice is right. I'm not saying royalty generically is a tax. That, that may perhaps be my, my limited legal skills don't allow me to go that far. Man. Maybe somebody may be able to develop that point. I can't. <laughs> I'm not conceding anybody else's case. My limited intelligence follow doesn't permit me to develop that point. Tax, but it's an exaction by the state of a share of uh, mineral mineral rights. And if it is construed like that, and why was this one created in 35? It's something I have to address your lordship fully because one can't just read the plain language. You have to see where it came from, how it came, and what are the legal framework in which this was introduced. And if you construe it that way, the whole thing just falls into place. Why was Section 25 put into the Act? Treating royalty and tax in the same breath as an exaction. Why a, 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 why a penalty and a prosecution for non-payment of royalty? Now, when you speak about how it came, we cannot also be uh, forgetful of the Constitution Assembly debate when it was deliberately kept within the state's power the power of taxation. Yes. Although a suggestion was made that it should be brought to the union powers list. Malad, the I'll tell you a lot of why. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm digressing because there's a no address argument. But you may address it at the appropriate no, time but, because you talked about time. I must tell you a lot why. Because one idea was move minerals to the union. That's right. They said, no, we will keep minerals the same way industries, minerals will be kept in the states with the overriding power to power. In fact, one of the big criticisms has been uh, industries. The, the declaration in the Industrial Development Regulation Act pretty much wiped the state clean. And that has been the problem. But tell us this, Mr. Larve, I mean, this is just, uh, it may be a conceptual issue. It's not necessarily against you, I just have this uh, doubt. Suppose when the state taxes income. Yes. Is that to be regarded as an exaction of the income? Or suppose a state, there's a tax, there's an excise, excise is on manufacture. It's not an exaction of the value of the article manufactured. Or suppose they tax corporate profits. Of course, the impact is that you are taking a share of the profits. Well, but it's not an exaction of your profit. Excise duty was in the old, if you, if you go back to the historical definition of excise duty, the word excise was exactly. Exaction. It's a tax. It's an imposition. Of on course, all exactions, the all taxes are the exaction. Subject. The levy is a tax. The levy is an imposed tax on well, a particular okay. subject, whether it's income or the value of the article manufactured or, or services rendered. But now, in the case of the it, goods and services tax. For but land you can't say that the state is exacting. I'm sorry, but if they tax us for our income, they don't take away our income. No, it's no, a tax on the income which you earn. No, it, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Every tax is an exaction. Exaction by definition means something which is compelled by law, not something which you do by contract or voluntary. So in that sense, it's an exaction by law. But not the share, land revenue, for example, and I, when I deal with the murti aspect of the case, land revenue, for example, is that we said, what is land revenue? It's the, it reflects the sovereign share of the produce. That was land revenue. And when you, when it comes by law, it becomes an exaction. So today a land revenue law is the shares, an exaction by the state of a share. Today, of course, the notion of a state has changed. It's not, it's not like a king or a sovereign today. It, it's a welfare state, etc., etc. But conceptually, they remain the same. But I'm, this is the third point which I'm going to develop now, about what is exactly a tax on mineral rights in the Indian context. So there are three independent elements. The first two go together purely as a matter of interpretation of entry 50 and the interplay. Yesterday, my Lord, the Chief Justice asked me, why are you showing these cases? The interplay between 54-23 and entry 50. Today, my Lord, the state, and it will have some bearing when, I, when it comes to the context, but I'm just mentioning. Today, the state is the owner of minerals, but it cannot alienate its mineral rights. If the state wants to make a legal framework for alienation of its own mineral rights, it can't. 
because if it had to make it could either do it as a owner if they if there was no law on the field then the law of contract would prevail or if the state wanted to make a legislative framework for alienating its ownership rights it would have to reach 2023 because as the owner you can't make a law you would have to find something in lease two and that only place where they would find it is entry 23 and if 23 is swamped the state is the owner but has no right to alienate its own mineral rights so these are all i I'm sorry man i got a little ahead of myself let me come back therefore to the starting point of my submission so that i am able to go down logically there are three elements therefore i say in this entry which require a rigorous analysis the first two go together can you just again formulate them <coughs> yes i have done a lighter vein since nowadays we are all on youtube when we are arguing here and on social media maladi there is a brown colored liquid which my daughter has sent which is for my throat it's, it's just that because <laughs> i remember when somebody had put up on one of these law websites council drinking coffee i wanted to clarify man i shouldn't say he has come from london he has done what english barristers do <laughs> get it something in a class the first is it is taxes on mineral rights and i have put it on bold that's what your lot you will have to analyze what is a tax on mineral rights the second is what is the kind of limitations which our founding fathers had in mind when they used the phrase of great width any limitations not just limitations any limitations why did they say any limitations and the third is they did not say by imposed by law by parliament they made it descriptive by law relating to mineral development i have to now establish in order to succeed that there is a law relating to mineral development which there is I don't think there's any cavil on that and that such a law imposes those limitations the only one thing which we like to your second point the law imposes those limitations on the tax be on the tax tax on mineral rights i want to start with that in fact my lord that's a point which for want of a better expression cuts both ways i i say it cuts my way for for the following reason we know that taxing laws generally operate in a field distinct from laws relating to regulation we start with that premise so that's an established constitutional premise how will then a limitation look like on a taxing power if that limitation is to be found in a law relating to mineral development what kind of limitation are we looking for it is not a tax versus tax limitation it's not parliament saying we have shared therefore i will tax it rather than you taxing it when I mean, that's what your lot should have held now parliament can tax it but that's a separate argument i'm going to address on what i call the kannadas and kanandram on whether they were right, i mean i mean whether the judgment saying because 50 is denuded it lands in 97 97 is right or wrong that's something a lot should have to consider but let's take it without any 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 of those trappings what should we be looking for i start from there here you have a taxing law but then you are told look at any limitations which are which may arise from a law relating to mineral development any limit so what are those kind of limitations which would arise and that's where there is may not offer the answer well if the manner in which the law relating to mineral development is cast covers all aspects of mineral development including the share of the state from the resources go yes, front i'm so sorry so i took down is the manner in which the law relating to mineral development is cast includes all aspects of the matter including the share of the state in the in the mineral resource that would then and then a tax on mineral right and and why was all this brought this was all brought it was federalized if i may coin that expression rather than leave it at the state level because of the uneven distribution of resources so the way i formulated it is if the manner in which the law relating to mineral development is cast includes all aspects of the matter including the share of the state in the mineral resource that would exclude the power of the state to seek any further exaction on mineral rights yes 
because ultimately if we take a step back you may call it tax on mineral right or what else is it? it is the state monetizing a resource land tax on land the state is one and, and for public good we all know today states levy tax for public good at least in theory not for enriching the coffers of a ruler but for public good so and today Ballard with 9b and 9c sitting there including local development funding being raised under a law for mineral development but section 9 is only one kind of exaction of course. It is not all encompassing. No, 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 it's not. Nine is not the complete answer. It is only one type, royalty. Of course, Malad, sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Nine B, nine C. Nine B. Nine B, nine C. Yes. I'm only showing. So what you are saying is that where parliament wanted that the revenues of the states should be supplemented further. Yes, it in has. In to mineral rights. Then they have been given different types of heads for Correct. realization. And parliament has done it. Now, the so import. Nine includes royalty. So. Really, your argument is not is much more nuanced. You are not saying royalty excludes the the fact that Parliament has imposed a royalty, which can be realized by the state, excludes the taxing power. But that where Parliament wanted to create additional heads of revenue for it the has. states, it's doing so. And Manod, this has been so Mr. Sarve, Nine B goes to a foundation, which is foundation. completely independent, and Nine C goes to a trust. It does not, directly. In fact, a lot of the laws when your lordship see, which have been struck down. Were the 9B kind of laws where they created, uh, you may call it a foundation, a district mineral foundation, or you may call it a separate head by which the state keeps it and uses it, uses it for demarcated funds. That's how they, these assesses work. I'll show them a lot when I, when I show the state legislation. 9B is packed what the states have been uh, told you can't do now. I mean, subject to what we will also take on Kesoram versus India cements. So, my submission is. On a construction of entry 50, I'm sorry if I take a step back, therefore, I should be able to show that first of all, Parliament has federalized this. Parliament does nothing under entry 54 and says, I leave it to the states, it is left to the states, untrammeled. A state by itself impose limitations on mineral development, but that's not good enough for 50. Suppose we're not 54 or not there, you can have under 23. Could I, be a, could I argue that under 23 this is done, therefore there is no limitation? No. Imposed by parliament by now. So it limits it to a legislation referable to entry 54. 